Okay, we had a little tease there. We are indeed going to talk to someone now from the National Association of Health and Underwriters. Marcy Buckner is joining us via the Google Hangout. Marcy, thank you for being here and uh, kind of picking up on what we were just talking about with the group there. Um, is that tricky? What, how is that transition from a group coverage from your job insurance to Medicare? Right. It, it shouldn't be too tricky as long as you have that qualifying event that they were referring to, whether it's turning 65 or becoming disabled and under 65 when you're leaving your group plan. So as long as you have that qualifying event, it shouldn't be too tricky to leave your employer sponsor coverage to go into Medicare. We kind of touched on it just there as well. I mean, that we, I think we've all uh, heard or known someone or have experienced ourselves, especially during the recession uh, of an early retirement, perhaps before one intended to retire. So what, what do you do when you're in that period before you have that qualifying event, as you say? Right, and they mentioned this a bit as well, going into the COBRA program. And then I'll talk a bit about the exchanges um, since they touched on that, but didn't yeah. go too in depth with it. And that's something, so HHS, has tried to transition into saying marketplaces instead of exchanges. Um, so if you hear those two terms, it's the same thing. Um, exchanges are the same as a marketplace, but I'll okay. use that term since that's what they want us to say. Is that just better PR? Or, what's it, or, is, that, or is that trying to communicate <laughs> more clearly? Reasons, but, uh, that's another conversation. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. All right, we'll stick yeah. to the topic. Well, going, going into the marketplace could also be an option for uh, these 50 to 64 year olds as um, an individual and they would be able to, um, if they have had a reduce in, um, in salary or been laid off with employment and that's why they no longer have the employer coverage, they could qualify for a subsidy within the ex exchange or the marketplace um, and receive a reduced cost in coverage there. Um, and open enrollment starts for that October 1st of this year and plans will begin January 1st. Since you're giving us this national perspective, can you tell us how it's going other places where the exchanges are in effect? Right, so right now really the only exchange that's in effect is in Massachusetts and they call it the connector. So, and that is only because they have been up and running for several years under the Romney plan that he Correct. put into place. So across the country, the marketplaces will all open for open enrollment on October 1st, regardless of whether the state is having their own state marketplace, a state partnership marketplace, or a federally facilitated marketplace. And Missouri will have a federally facilitated marketplace. So the federal government will be running the marketplace in Missouri with some input from the state. What are, um, what are some misconceptions that you see when it comes to Medicare? There are a few misconceptions. I think some uh, seniors think that everything is covered when it does depend on uh, it does depend on some of your income and what you are able to pay. Um, my mother specifically was enrolled in Medicare this past year, and she had a lot of questions for me. Uh, but she asked them after the fact, and I think that's something that was mentioned earlier was to really plan for this and to see a licensed agent or broker to talk about all the different plans that are available in traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage. Um, because my mother was surprised with some of the different co-pays and things like that that she was expected to pay once she was enrolled. And um, it, perhaps if she had spoken with someone about it before filling out the paperwork, she would have been enrolled in a plan that was more beneficial for her from the start. Okay, so talk oh, also about I'll say another um, misconception is that everything is covered because of the exchanges, and that's also not true. Um, especially with when people hear about the Medicaid expansion that is in correlation with healthcare reform, and the, but a bit separate than the marketplaces, states like Missouri that are not expanding Medicaid because that can be a portion that goes in for paying with Medicare um, for some of the dual eligibles. Since Missouri is not expanding their Medicaid to 138% of federal poverty right. level, there is still going to be a large gap of those that are not covered. Um, but because there's this PR buzz with Medicaid expansion and healthcare reform rolling out, a lot of um, some of the lower income people don't know the difference with um, Medicaid expansion and what that means, and that because states like Missouri have not expanded, that um, they will not be fully covered, that there will be um, some responsibility on the individual to um, put forth uh, some contribution towards their coverage. So how do the private 
and the public plans work together? Can they, should they, what do you rec recommend? Right, well, states like Arkansas are trying to do that with the Medicaid expansion in Arkansas, so um, somewhat close to where you are in right. Missouri. They are taking um, federal funds to put towards private plans within the Medicaid market. So that's one way that they're doing it. There have also been a lot, of, there's also been a lot of discussion in the Hill and several briefings about Medicare funding and whether or not um, raising the age for Medicare eligibility should be considered and if it would be a cost saving initiative. And this is something that we have seen um, definitely both sides of the issue play out. And with the statistics that are coming out, there's not a concise answer on how that should be solved and whether the age should be increased. Uh, right now, I don't think that we'll see um, the age increase from 65 for several years. I think that it's a pretty safe bet that it'll stay at 65. Okay, we've both talked about our parents. What's the one piece of advice we should be giving our parents? Because I know any day now, they're going to come to me for advice instead mm -hmm. of the other way around. Yes, this is, so this is the first time my mother has asked me for advice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been, so I'm very flattered. Um, usually it is the other way around or, um, you know, I'm, I'm the daughter, so I don't have much to, to contribute. But <laughs> now that I am in the healthcare field for quite some time, uh, she has been listening to me. And I think that as far as Medicare is concerned, making sure that you reach out to a professional that can let you know exactly what the plans are. There's um, you know, Medicare Part A and Part B. There's the prescription drug with Part D. There are Medicaid Advantage plans, but there's more than one plan within those and some other supplemental packages. So you really need to speak with a professional agent or broker that's licensed in your state. And that is a consumer protection. So I know a lot of seniors worry about speaking with someone about their health and disclosing their financial background. But if they speak with a licensed agent or broker, they know that they have that protection, that they're licensed with the state, and they can review, uh, your, like I said, your financial background and your medical background and match you with a plan so your needs will be covered and you won't have other, um, other coverage for things that you may not need because of some of the health issues you've had in the past. Marcy Buckner. So I think this might be another topic for a senior, um, a senior healthcare spotlight, but long-term care is something I would also suggest yeah. um, everyone to talk to their parents about. My grandmother enrolled in it 30 years ago when it was um, very brand new and cutting edge. And she is definitely benefiting from that now with some in-home care where otherwise she would be um, in a nursing facility. And so um, I had a very, very serious conversation with my mother last Christmas um, when we decided to have in-home care for my grandmother. And I discovered my mother did not have long-term care. So I would also suggest that that's something that you talk to your parents about and start enrolling in now. I'm enrolled in it now. So um, like the previous guest said, start thinking about it in kindergarten. In kindergarten. Um, I started thinking about it in my early 30s. <laughs> I have my long-term care. So Thank you. Um, I would suggest that's also a topic for discussion. Very good. Thank you, Marcy Buckner. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And speaking of some of those...